Satan operates in darkness. You know what I'm saying? And what darkness is all about is about covering the truth. You know what I'm saying? Lies are used to cover the truth. But the thing is, but first, as what I learned about the pattern of darkness, that every lie needs a foundation of a deception. Yes. Every lie needs the foundation for deception. Like, for instance, of, of Eve, what the serpent told Eve. Eve told Eve, if you eat from this tree, you become as God. Now, the deception of that is that Eve can think, wait a minute, I'm made in the image and the likeness of God. I'm sort of kind of like God. So as God, you know, kind of could make sense. See what I'm saying? And he, she can, he can deceive Eve with that idea because she is made in the image and likeness of God. But when he just said, as God, it's somewhat, you know, it's kind of like the somewhat deception that I did a message on called, uh, on YouTube called the as God. And as God means A-S and it means almost successful, you know, almost a success, you know, since to convince men to operate in a system that can almost work. Or almost successful that you know kind of like the system that we operate in a day you know what I'm saying that things can almost work you know what I'm saying but it doesn't work all the way but the kingdom of God the kingdom of God, kingdom of God will work things all the way you know what I'm saying not some of the way or somewhat of a success that this world system has conditioned everybody concerning a lot of things especially the the uh, the hospitals and the doctors, they can almost save this person and almost save that person, but don't save this person, but don't save a lot of people from whatever sickness or disease or critical accident, bad things happen. They can almost save this person, but this person's gone. And it's the idea of deteriorating humanity, but God, of course, Jesus Christ, the power of God can heal all sickness, all diseases, all, you know what I'm saying? Like it says in the scriptures that I'm like, uh, church, what's going on? We're supposed to have the power that can heal all sickness, all disease, based upon the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom in Matthews 4 and 23. Look it up. Yeah, if you got the gospel of the kingdom, you're supposed to heal all sicknesses, all diseases, all of them, if it's about Jesus Christ. All right, but the topic of the message that I like this fear of the Lord scripture. Happy God of Ween, everybody. Uh, I hope your spirit is enjoying God of Ween, that you are learning about something about God that very important if you truly going to have a relationship with God. But hey, you want to follow certain people teachings and think that, you know, you can just halfway have a relationship with God. It's your choice. What I'm here to present these teachings, and it's up to you if you want to receive these teachings according to the scriptures. Now, I love this statement, Saul, uh, Samuel. Samuel is an awesome prophet. I love Samuel. That guy was no nonsense. Fear the Lord, no nonsense prophet. God, I know about you know Samuel that Hannah prayed for a baby child and. Hannah promised if you give her a baby, he'll give it back to God. And Samuel came about, and Samuel, this guy, is, I believe, set a, set a standard of being a prophet to the king. I believe Samuel set a standard for every prophet that they should operate in the standard that he put out here. But I love what Samuel says right here. I mean, it's just cut to the point. You know, here it is. You know what I'm saying? Hate it or like it. But it's uh, 1 Samuel 12. And uh, it's the, where is it? Oh, it's the 14th verse to the 15th that I want to read all the way to, I want to try to read all the way to the 17th. I want to read all, now watch this. Samuel, watch Samuel. And if, Ye fear the Lord, 
and serve him and obey his words and not rebel against them, just that's something, not rebel against them, the, uh, the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reign over you continue to follow the Lord thy God, that you will follow the Lord thy God if you do that. Watch this. I like this, but I like this, but, but if, if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandments of God, the commandments of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you. The hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Yes, your fathers in the wilderness. That's another message. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Do before your eyes. Is it not wheat? Yeah, is it not wheat harvest? Today I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. Boy, wasn't Samuel on beast mode. He was on some serious prophet beast mode concerning uh uh, this is Samuel's address to Israel. You know what I'm saying? Man, <laughs> hey, raw and uncut, simple to the point. There's no, you know, what what he just said, huh? What is it? there's no hmm, what 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 was Samuel talking about? But you know, you know how men are. We will, hmm, is he talking to us? <laughs> you know, you know how the flesh is when it comes to straight up correction and straight up rules and commandments that you just need to follow and don't be a moron and not follow them. So it says, but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, whoa, goodness gracious. Well, the thing is, look, this, this is what fearing the Lord is all about. We'll listen to the prophet. You know what I'm saying? Listen to fear the Lord will listen to the prophet of when the prophet is speaking and the, and the prophet is being straight up. He's being straight up real about the condition. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, I see too much in the church today that people love prophesying blessings on people, but rarely you hear a prophet will prophesy but if but if you don't not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against then the Lord, then the hands of the Lord be against you. You don't hear that kind of prophecy going on these days out there in your, I bet, your TV evangelist world. You don't hear if you do not do what God says. You know what I'm saying? This will, he will, his hand of the Lord will be against you, but you will hear the prophecy of blessings of prosperity and, you know, things will work out right in your life. You're going to have a, 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 a wife or you're going to have a husband. You're going to have everything that God has for you. You're going to have this, but rare you hear that, you know, but if you do not listen to the voice of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? That is, it's something. Some people are saying, speaking the the that kind of prophecy. Some, a few, a few that's all about the truth, are speaking that. But the thing is, we live in a church world that, and you look, this is all about leadership, and that I want to talk about. This is all about the leadership of God's people. You know what I'm saying? And who is the leadership of the church? Is the fivefold ministry concerning the apostles, prophets, evangelists, 
pastors, teachers, you know, the fivefold ministry. It's the leader supposed to be the leaders that God has ordained for the church and then bishops and they got deacons and stuff like that. But you know, they added all all kind of positions nowadays in the church world. You know, they got these, you know, senior pastors or they're just adding a little bit to these power of these positions and you know the I know the ideal of reverend, you know, like um is reverend is in the name in the Bible of the path a part of the fivefold ministry, if that word reverend is part of fivefold ministry. Oh, it's crazy. It's really crazy, man. This is what's going on in the church world. There's a lot of leaders out there, but are they, are they following the Lord? Are they following the God that, you know, it's, are they following the, the uh, Ephesians 4, you know, the, the God that is through you all, in you all, you know, are, are they following him, you know? You know, because I love, but I love Paul. Kind of, Paul is like a Samuel, straight and uh, raw and uncut word of God. No, you know, preservatives of people pleasing, you know, uh, things in it. But Paul talks about, you know, uh, the church in Ephesians 4. It talks about the there should be one body. You know, we got a lot of many bodies going on in the church system or many denominations, but it says one body and one spirit, even as it ye call in one hope for your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who above all and through you all and in you all. See what I'm saying? That kind of order that has been established in the church concerning the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? That ideal is not being seen correctly, you know, concerning leadership. But now watch this, what Samuel, because y'all served the God of Israel. And Samuel is speaking about the leadership concerning Saul. That if Saul don't fear the Lord, that the Lord will come against the leadership. You know what I'm saying? The Lord will come against the leadership if you're not following his voice and, and following the commandments of the Lord. He will come against, you know, you. You know what I'm saying? He was straight up, raw and uncut to what the, to Saul and to the people of Israel. And the thing is, there's not a lot of straight up, raw and uncut information given to the church right now to tell them, that look, y'all need to get be about the scriptures, be about the commandments, be about what thus saith the Lord, and be about aiming to follow what you're supposed to be following. You know what I'm saying? If you fear the Lord, and if you fear and truly have a genuine relationship with him, and about his purpose of saving souls and changing lives, and establishing the kingdom of God, if you sincerely about that, you will be about that, not about the people pleasing and how you can attract a lot of people to your ideal structure of a building that people call churches. You know what I'm saying? You will be about this order of what it has been established concerning the scriptures. If you truly sincere about the will of God concerning uh, you in leadership. You know what I'm saying? It's what this message uh, hopefully can be about. And look, I put these videos out for people to discuss these kind of things. Christians, we need to be discussing the ideal leadership. If we truly care about God to play a great role in what we're doing, we need to be discussing these things that about the fearing of the Lord among Christians and, and, and among a lot of people to be about the uh getting in right standings with God in the relationship concerning we are supposed to have with him that fearing the Lord is all about on the agenda to do but that's the message I hope you understand what I'm saying concerning fear the Lord but I'm gonna 
figure out what title I'm going to put this message in. And that's the message God be glory him for and ever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.